So this is a worked example of diffusion in gases. This is the problem statement. A spherical pellet of carbon burns in pure oxygen at 0.7 atmospheres and at 800 degrees Celsius. The surface of the pellet can be assumed to be blanketed by pure carbon dioxide product. The carbon dioxide partial pressure far from the pellet surface can be assumed to be zero. The question asks us to calculate the rate at which the carbon burns at a time when the pellet diameter is eight millimeters. And is this a case of equimolar counter diffusion or diffusion through a stationary component? The important piece of data provided is that the diffusivity for carbon dioxide and oxygen at one atmosphere and 20 degrees Celsius, so a different pressure and temperature to our system, is 0 0.153 by 10 to the minus 4 meters squared per second. If we draw an a graphic of our system, so the solid curved line is the surface of the particle and the dotted line on the surface indicates the blanket of pure carbon dioxide. R1 is the radius of our particle. Our reaction is carbon reacts with oxygen to produce CO2 and importantly one mole of oxygen reacts to form one mole of carbon dioxide product. Adjacent to the surface of the particle we have pure carbon dioxide so the partial pressure of oxygen in that region must be zero. Our total pressure is 0 0.7 atmospheres and so in that region very close to the surface the partial pressure of CO2 is equal to the total pressure which is 0 0.7 atmospheres. If we consider a point far away from the surface of the pellet and call that R2. At R2 we are told that we can assume that the concentration of CO2 is zero. So far away from the pellet surface the carbon dioxide concentration is assumed to be zero and hence the partial pressure of oxygen is equal to the total pressure which is 0 0.7 atmospheres. So if we consider carbon dioxide to be component A it is diffusing away from the surface of the particle and to continue to provide oxygen to the reaction so that the reaction proceeds oxygen must diffuse back towards the surface of the pellet and we can consider oxygen to be component B in this analysis. We need to assume a kind of steady state in our system will assume that it's at pseudo steady state. Obviously we cannot have pure steady state because the particle must decrease in size as the carbon is consumed by the combustion reaction. But we'll assume a pseudo steady state effectively assuming that the rate of change of the radius is much much less than the rate at which the diffusion process occurs. So Fick's law gives us the relationship between the flux, the diffusivity and the concentration gradient. However our system is in circular or spherical coordinates, we're working in terms of R and so we replace the Z from Cartesian coordinates with R and DZ with DR. So interestingly in this spherical system the flux is not constant because as Z changes the uh, area that the carbon dioxide must diffuse through also changes. However the, the mass balance requires a molar rate of diffusion that is constant and independent of the uh, coordinate away from the system whether we call that Z or, or R. So if we write our flux as equal to n dot CO2 which is the molar rate of diffusion of carbon dioxide divided by the area. We can express that molar rate of diffusion the n CO2 term as such where a is now a function of r the radius 
we also know that we can express that a explicitly as just 4 pi r squared, the area of a sphere. And assuming ideal gas behaviour, we can relate the concentration of carbon dioxide to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. It's just partial pressure divided by RT, taking care to ensure that the units are consistent. And so RT being constant, we can take them out the front. And so the derivative concentration is just 1 on RT times the derivative partial pressure. Therefore, we can write our molar rate of diffusion expression in terms of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. We can separate the variables, so take the dr term over to the left and collect the r's there as well from the 4 pi r squared and leave the dp term on the right. That large term preceding dp is, is a constant nothing in there depends on P or R. If we do the integration and substitute in the boundary conditions, so uh, R1 and R2, R2 being infinite where the concentration of CO2 becomes zero, and in terms of the partial pressures we uh, assume that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is, is zero at infinity. We get our expression However, our diffusivity term is still unknown. We need to have the diffusivity at 0 0.7 atmospheres and 1073 Kelvin. So we know that the diffusivity of two components A and B is proportional to T to the power of 1.75 over P total for gases. So we can use that expression to calculate our diffusivity at condition 2 which is 0 0.7 atmospheres and 1073 Kelvin compared to condition 1 which was 293 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere and the result is 2.119 by 10 to the minus 4 meter squared per second so substituting that diffusivity value in we can calculate our molar rate of diffusion. Remember that the radius term is half of the diameter, so our diameter was given as 8 millimeters at the time point which we're interested in. So the radius is half that, 4 by 10 to the minus 3 meters. Our partial pressure of carbon dioxide, we need to have consistent units, so here it's expressed in terms of pascals. So 1.0325 by 10 to the minus 5 is the pressure 1 atmosphere expressed in pascals multiplied by 0 0.7 atmospheres and our value when we convert it and express it in terms of moles per hour is 0 0.311 from the reaction stoichiometry we know that uh, if CO2 is produced at this rate so that molar rate of diffusion is the rate at which CO2 is produced by that reaction then carbon must be burning at that rate in a 1 to 1 mile ratio. So it's very easy using the molar mass of carbon which is 12 grams per mole. We can very easily calculate the rate at which carbon is burning which is 3.73 grams per hour and this is in fact the answer to part A of the question. Part B is very simply answered in this case the diffusion is equimolar counter and that's because for every one mole of carbon dioxide which diffuses away from the surface of the particle one mole of oxygen must diffuse back so that the reaction can proceed at steady state however obviously this is totally dependent on the reaction stoichiometry so in this very simple example one mole of oxygen consumed produces one mole of carbon dioxide if that uh, relationship was not one-to-one, -one, then we would not see equimolar counter-diffusion.